She told the story of how, early one Saturday morning, thinking of making jam, she'd gone to the park to pick blackberries. She'd seen the brambles in fruit as she drove past on her way back from work the Thursday before. That had put the idea of jam in her mind. When she arrived at the park, a 15 or so minute walk from her home, she found that not only were there no blackberries, there weren't even any brambles. She wandered the deserted paths and bemusedly noticed that the undergrowth had been viciously depopulated. Not a single thorny bush was in sight. Approaching the far side of the park, she glimpsed between the trees the flickering of a bonfire, with a man at work dressed in green overalls, throwing scrub into the blaze. Taking him for a park employee, she drew near and inquired at the lack of blackberries. The man pulled off a thick rubber gardening glove and wiped his damp sooty forehead on the back of his arm. Yeah, he said, we pulled them all up yesterday. These are the last of them. But why, she asked. Dunno, the order just came down from on high. On the way back home, she decided she must write to the council. She'd word the letter sternly. The door of her house opened onto an inundation. The doormat was soaked through and the tiled floor of the hall was under a couple of centimetres of water. A half-dissolved bath bomb floated lazily towards her, trailing a psychedelic wake. From behind the ajar door of the bathroom came the sound of running water. A peculiar manic calm came over her and she strode sloppily upstream to her study, sat at her desk, feet propped up of the swampy carpet on her sewing basket, and started drafting the letter. The floods and the brambles got mixed up in her head, haloed by the luminescent bath bomb cloud, as she wrote the sternest she could to demand that the council do something about her thorny, multicoloured, overgrown hallway. In a flurry of energy, she finished the letter, flourished her signature, enveloped, stamped and addressed it, waded down the hall, trotted to the end of the road and dramatically deposited it in the post box. And as she did so, the bitter wave of reality splashed over her. What would the council think of the mad old bat with bathwater dripping over her doorstep? She slumped back home, closed the bathroom taps that her troublesome house guest, the plucky poltergeist, had opened and set to mopping. That evening she phoned a few of her friends with more expansive gardens than her meagre plot in the front. And that night, past midnight, a couple of cars pulled up by the park, boots bristling with trowels and bare-rooted bushes, and they set to replanting the ravaged undergrowth. <laughs>